Hey guys, Brian here. Welcome to the lab. Thanks for joining me today. This video is going to be all about shipping reptiles. Obviously, we work mostly with geckos, so this is all going to be pretty much geared towards geckos, but it's a lot of information that translates into shipping all kinds of reptiles. Now, I've worked on top of breeding geckos. I've worked at UPS for almost 10 years, a little over 10 years. So I've got a lot of insight onto how the shipping industry works and it's really opened my eyes to a lot of things we need to do, not only shipping in general, but specifically shipping reptiles, things to do to help keep them safe and give them the least amount of stress possible during their shipment. Shipping is pretty hard on the animals. You would be amazed at some of the things that happen inside a UPS facility. So. This is some of the best things that I've figured out working at UPS and working with reptiles on how to get them to their destination safely. Now, we're gonna go everything from the basics on to everything else, so we're gonna start with the very basic things. You need a box. I absolutely recommend you don't use anything other than foam panel insert boxes. There's a whole lot of places to buy these online. They're easy to find, and uh, they're basically real simple, just boxes with foam panels that make walls, a floor, and a ceiling. And the foam panels do two main things. For one, they make the box very rigid. You can't crush it. So that is vital to your geckos when they go through the shipping system. It's very hard on the boxes. If they're in just a cardboard box, they're going to get squished. Obviously, you don't want that. These give your box rigidity. They also are great temperature control. Temperature is a huge factor consider to consider when shipping any kind of reptile. So these give you a lot of temperature control and they really help out that way. So you really got to use these. So real quick, I'm going to show you how to put a box together. They come with all the pieces you need, but they're not assembled. So you just have to put them together when you order them. And they're real easy. Just fold the flaps down. One thing to consider when you're shipping is tape. A lot of people use really cheap tape. Tape is not expensive. Even expensive tape is not very expensive. So don't skimp. Get good high quality packing tape. And then you put one strip right across the seam here in the middle. And another thing I've learned at UPS, I've seen so many times somebody will ship a box and not press their tape down and the tape just falls right off because it's not actually stuck to the box very well. So I always just use the back of my fingers, my fingernails, and really rub on the tape. You can actually see the marks where your fingers hit and it really sticks the tape to the box. Just make sure it's not going to come off. You also want to put two strips on the side edges, on the side seams. And this just makes it so nothing can get in here and rip this panel off. If this tape fails, this tape's going to hold it. It's just an extra security step that I highly recommend everybody do. Once you have the box taped up and shaped, you put the foam panels in. These are really easy. There's one for the floor, four that are cut perfectly for the sides. To me, this is the worst part of shipping because I hate this way these panels sound. But you do what you got to do, right? Ah, I hate that sound. And it's that easy. Now you've got a solid, good box. Uh, the other thing to consider, if you're somebody that buys and sells a lot of reptiles, a lot of people reuse boxes, and that's just fine. Just double check your box, make sure it's in good shape. It doesn't have crushed corners or bends in it. The panels are in good shape. The styrofoam's in good shape, and there's no problem reusing a box. The only thing you need to do is make sure the shipping label, old shipping labels, are either completely removed or completely 100% colored over. I can't tell you how many times at UPS in my building we've come across boxes that have two shipping labels on them, one of them to our building from an old shipment and one of them to somewhere else, anywhere else in the world, sometimes even outside of the country. And when UPS gets the box, there's two shipping labels on it, they accidentally scan the one for our building where it's not supposed to go because it's supposed to go to the other label's address. It ends up in our building halfway across the world or across the country from where it's actually supposed to be delivered. That's very bad for a live animal, obviously. So make sure any other labels are completely removed or completely covered over. Every, every inch of them is covered over. Um, that's pretty much it for boxes. It's pretty simple. Most boxes have on the flaps a little spot to write the species and the quantity and what you're shipping in them. We'll go over that in a little bit. Writing them on the labels is not really the best way to do it anymore. But first, let's get to packing up your geckos. So now that you've got your box, I use small deli cups for geckos. Uh, these can also be used for smaller snakes, larger snakes. They make snake bags. Even for some larger geckos, using snake bags are good. Snakes bags are cheap. They're easy to get. 
They're great to use for big leaf tails, big lichianus, bigger snakes, anything like that. Smaller stuff, deli cups are the way to go. Now the idea here is you want the least amount of free space in your deli cups as possible. A lot of people think with a bigger deli cup that gives the gecko more room to move and stretch out and they'll be more comfortable. That's not entirely true because when your box is going through UPS or FedEx, I guarantee it, all this stuff on the side about live harmless reptile, fragile, handle with care, arrows up this way, that all gets completely ignored by the people working at FedEx or UPS. I promise you it does. This box is going to be tumbling down conveyor belts. People are going to throw it around, throw it onto the shelf of a truck. The truck is bouncing all over. They're not treated very well. That's just the way the shipping industry works. Most shipping buildings, the building I work in, is the smaller of the two UPS buildings in Denver, and we still handle 50, 60, 70,000 packages every day. We just don't have time to handle every box with kid gloves and put it down perfectly nice with the arrows up. In theory, that's the way it's supposed to work, but in reality, that doesn't happen. They get torn around and treated pretty badly. So, going back to the deli cups, with the geckos getting bounced around in the boxes, you want the least amount of space in your deli cups as possible. That way the geckos don't have any room to get bounced around. It's a much, much smoother ride for them if they're in a smaller cup. So, the two sizes I use, this is a six ounce cup, this is an eight ounce cup. Any gecko, any crusted gecko, any gargoyle gecko, any chihuahua gecko, and any smaller lichianus, anything you guys are breeding is all going to fit in one of these two cups. I wouldn't use anything bigger than this. If it'll fit in a smaller cup, put it in a smaller cup. As long as they're not getting squished down by the cup, go as small as you can. Now when we put the geckos in here, what I use is just grab a couple of paper towels, I fold them all together, rip them in half, tear them apart, and I have stacks and stacks and stacks of these all around our facility just for shipping geckos. Just put one, fold it small enough to fit in the cup. I always spray them with a spray bottle so they stay humid during the trip and they have water, they stay hydrated, and that's all you need to do. Your geckos fit right in there. So real quick, I've got a couple geckos here just to show you guys the fit. This girl, this is a Ridgeback Super Dal girl. Anything this size or bigger is gonna go in one of these cups. Now the best way to do them, if you guys have seen my uh, calcium checking video, I've shown you the best way to hold your geckos without hurting them to keep them still between the legs and the ears, right like that. They fit nice in your hand. Hold them firm, but don't squeeze them obviously. Best way to keep them still, and then you just put them right down in your cup. This girl doesn't want to cooperate. It's tough to get them in, you just have to be really careful not to squish any tail tips or toes. A lot of times they'll have their toes up on the side like that. You want to make sure they move those toes before you put the lid down. And as soon as they're in there, they're good to go. As you can see, standing up, her back is just barely touching the top of this. That's how you want it. You want them in there pretty tight so they don't get bounced around. Now the same thing goes for smaller geckos in the smaller cups. Fold these in half. A little bit of water to keep them hydrated. This little charcoal line guy. Anything hatchling to a little bit smaller than this, a little bit bigger than this, is all going to go in these littler cups. Put them down, kind of use the lid to trap them in so they walk right in there. You can gently tap them on the back or gently tap them on the tail to get them to walk in. Make sure you're not going to catch any toes or tails and you're good to go. Least amount of space possible. Now when you're putting them in your box, if I open my box up here, I always put the geckos at the bottom of the box and then put packing material on top of that. So a small deli cup is step one of keeping the geckos from getting jarred around during shipping. Filling up all the empty space is step two. Filling up all the empty space also helps with temperature control. Uh, packing peanuts work good. Usually I use newspaper. Today we've got a bunch of paper towels here. So if you rip off a bunch of paper towels, put them right on top. And ideally you want to fill all of the empty space. So everything around the sides of the geckos and there to the ceiling so they don't have anywhere to go. That way when this box gets shaken, as it's going to during shipping, there's not any empty space for the geckos to move around. Keeps them nice and secure. Put your foam panel right on top of that. Again, fold these up. Put your tape on, same thing as before. One piece of tape here, two along the sides, and you are good to go. The last thing you need to do for your box is poke one single hole in it. 
Obviously, there's not much ventilation in this box, and the geckos need to breathe. Even if you're shipping in colder temperatures with a heat pack, I use a screwdriver, just punch one hole straight through the box, through the foam panel inserts, all the way through so there's just a little bit of airflow. Make sure your geckos have fresh air for the whole trip. Now that's all you need to do to pack up and get your box ready to go. Now let's talk about cold weather shipping. All right guys, shipping in cold temperatures. Now the very most important thing to think about when shipping in cold temperatures is do you need to add supplemental heat to your box? If you're uncomfortable with it, you're not sure what you're doing, or you just don't feel comfortable adding a heat pack to your box, by all means, don't do it. Just wait for warmer temperatures to ship. Now, if you have a little bit of experience and you feel comfortable with it, this is the best way to go about it. The most important thing is never, ever, ever use hand warmers, these hot hand things. They look just like heat packs. They work the same way. They're basically smaller heat packs, but they don't act the same. The highest temperature these can reach is much, much higher than a long hour heat pack. They're way too hot for geckos and they don't last long enough for the whole shipment. These only rated for 10 hours. So these reach their peak temperature very quickly. It's much too hot and then it drops really quickly. 10 hours after you pack your shipment, your gecko might not even be out of your home city yet, much less actually all the way delivered. Don't ever use these. It's tempting mostly because Heat packs, normally you can't buy locally, so you've got a shipment that needs to go out and you ran out of heat packs, so you can run to the store and pick up a couple of these. Don't do it. Your gecko's most likely not going to survive the trip. Just throw these in the trash or use them for a cold winter day, put them in your boots, whatever they're made to use for. Don't use them for your animals. They're no good. What you want is a UniHeat heat pack. Now these, we use 40 hour heat packs. They make 40, 50, 60, and I think they make a 70 or 75 hour. I would use either the 40 or the 60. We use the 40s just because they're a little slimmer. The 60s, if uh, you're a little worried about it, I would recommend those. They're just a little bit safer. They're easier to use. The 60-hour ones don't reach as high of a temperature and they last longer. These ones reach a little higher temperature, but they're more than safe for using shipping geckos with. I've used these for years. They're great. Now these are oxygen activated, so as soon as you tear the package open, the reaction with the contents and the oxygen in the air is what makes them heat up. They're slow to heat up, so you're not going to rip it open, feel it, and it's not going to be warm. They take probably 20, 30, 40 minutes to really get warm to the touch, which is good. You want a slow, gradual heat. The best way to pack with these, in these two boxes, the most common size boxes you're going to use, I'll show you right now. This is the most common box we use. This is a 7x7x7 seven by seven by seven inch box. They also make a 7x7x6 seven by seven by inch box. Almost the same thing. And as we saw earlier, your geckos are packed in the very bottom. Your packaging material is on top of the geckos to keep them safe and warm and secure. And then I put the heat packs right on the ceiling lid here and I always tape them down one piece of tape here one piece of tape here it's important only to cover the edges of the heat pack like this with tape if you cover the whole thing the oxygen can't get to the material and it's not going to heat up it makes them pointless so just cover the edges like my hands are with tape and it's important to tape them to the ceiling because when this box is getting shaken around while it's being shipped if the contents shift around and your heat pack ends up right next to the deli cup your gecko's in it's going to cook your gecko so you've got to keep a barrier between your heat pack and your geckos, and that's where that insulation material comes in, whether it's packing peanuts, uh, paper towels, newspaper, whatever you use, there has to be space between the geckos and your heat pack, at least two inches of space. So that's what you want to do, two inches of space, tape your heat pack down so it's secure, and then just put your lid with the heat pack down right on top of here, tape your box shut, nothing inside is going to move, everything's going to be secure, and you'll be good to go. Now with the bigger boxes, if you have too many geckos to fit in a small box, you're shipping a couple adults or a handful of geckos, this is a 12 by 9 by 6 inch box. Now this is the other size I mainly use, and with these ones, when I'm packing up, if these are our geckos, I put all of our geckos on one side, of the box like this and then this panel on this side is where I tape the heat pack. So I would tape the heat pack here, have the geckos on this side and that gets a lot of buffer rooms so that heat pack doesn't overwhelm the geckos and get them too hot. 
And again, you want to fill all of this area up with newspaper or paper towels, anything like that to keep everything secure so the geckos don't end up over here too close to the heat pack. Uh, I would say heat packs, if it's below 45 degrees for the nighttime low, you're going to want to use a heat pack. And that's 45 degrees in both areas. If you're in, you know, Wisconsin and it's 32 degrees that night and you're shipping to Texas and their low is only 68 degrees, that's something you have to watch out for. You don't want to use a heat pack because when they get to Texas, that heat pack is still going to be active and they're going to be way too hot. That's dangerous for the geckos. So keep that in mind. There's a lot of times sh shipping is tricky. If you are at all in doubt, just wait for better temperatures on both ends to ship your geckos. All right, guys, the last thing we have to talk about is shipping companies, how to ship your animals. Uh, there's a number of different ways to go about this. Most people ship their animals with FedEx. Now you can ship with your own FedEx account, but you have to get live animal certified. Uh, to do that, you've got to contact FedEx, and there's a number of steps that you go through, but you certainly can do it. You can also ship live animals through the post office. I do not recommend that, mostly because they're not that reliable, and they uh, don't always have overnight shipping to every area, and you don't always know that your box is not going to be there the next day. So I would not ship through the post office. You can ship some animals through UPS. They do not allow snakes. If you're shipping lizards or tortoises, anything like that, you can ship UPS. They don't allow snakes, however, so if you're shipping snakes, UPS is a no-go. That is the reason that most reptile shipping companies, shipping brokers, ship through FedEx. There's a number of these shipping companies out there that you can go through. The biggest good points for them is they are already live animal certified because you're using their account you don't personally have to get certified that makes it a lot easier and also they get volume discounts because a lot of people use them to ship so they get high volume discounts they pass those savings along to you and it's much much cheaper than printing your own labels i highly highly recommend ship your reptiles We've been using Ship Your Reptiles since 2009. These guys are absolutely great. Their customer service is second to none. They are always there to help you out. They'll answer any question. They do sell, sell shipping kits. So they will sell you a whole box complete with the foam panels, cups to put your geckos in, a heat pack if you need it, everything you need. It shows up. You got everything you need to ship a gecko all the way up to bulk hundreds of boxes if you need them. They shell all your shipping supplies and they are the best for shipping animals. They offer things nobody else does. Um, they give us hookups on these awesome labels to make sure our boxes are labeled right and we're doing everything legally. They have insurance for their shipments so you can actually insure your shipment on time guaranteed. A lot of people think no matter who you ship through, if your box is late, you get a refund. That's true for every other normal overnight shipment you send through FedEx. If I send you a box of cookies overnight, it doesn't show up on time, the re shipping gets refunded. FedEx does not refund live animal shipping, even if it's late. They will not refund live animal shipments. So, with the insurance through Ship Your Reptiles, even if it's late, if it's late, they will give you your shipping money back, and that's coming out of their pockets. FedEx doesn't refund that. That's what the insurance for. It's also live arrival guarantee. As long as the box is packed correctly, you do everything you're supposed to do. If the box shows up late and the geckos are dead or the animals are dead because it was delayed or FedEx kept it too long or a plane broke down, anything like that, you can actually insure the cost of your animal. So if you ship a really nice $1,000 crested gecko and something goes terribly long, the plane breaks down and they leave it in the sun and on the tarmac where the plane broke down, I've had this happen once. I've shipped a lot of animals, I've only had it happen once, but it does happen. If you get the insurance for $1,000, they will give you $1,000 for the price of your animal because you bought the insurance. It's great. I highly recommend you use them. Um, like I said, give them a call if you have any questions about packing your animals. They will walk you through packing your boxes. They're absolutely great. Visit ShipYourReptiles.com to give them a try. When you create an account, the first shipping label you book, use the, key, the coupon code ALT40 for Altitude 40. That will get you 40% off the FedEx retail rate for your first label. It is a great way to try them out at almost half price. Get your first label at almost half price, try them out. You will love them, I promise. That is the only company we ship with. They're great. So, shipyourreptiles.com, coupon code ALT40, give that a try. Uh, if you guys have any other questions about shipping, leave me a comment down below. If there's anything I didn't get to, anything you want me to touch on again, 
or something I didn't touch on, let me know. I will get back to every comment if you guys have any questions. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching and have a great day.